Um, are there any special announcements that we need to make? Can I do that? Anything? Uh, we want to remember our user on a trip. Yeah, your early is on. Get in the van going to Pittsburgh on a mission trip. Why not? You don't have to. Let's keep in the today. It'll be okay. You read about that trip. If they want to follow the kids on the trip, they will be posting updates on Summit Youth Ministries. If you follow that on Facebook, you can read their updates nightly. Beth's granddaughter, Leah, is going to be journaling the trip. Oh, wow. They're going to... It's called Summit, yeah. Summit Youth Ministries. Summit Youth Ministry. And you can follow them on their trip. And, uh, Leah, that's Beth's granddaughter, is uh, Leah I. She's going to be posting that for everybody. By the time I got my stuff, by the time I got my stuff the water was up to my ankles. See, we've had some busy weeks with camps. Come on, daughter. And we need to remember our pastor's voice is going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that a blessing? Uh, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so remember him in our prayers. Oh, sorry, Dan. Couldn't help me. Anyway, so. <laughs> Let's see, what else is coming up? Okay, Vacation Bible School in August. They need helpers. First in July, there's going to be a fuel camp for the older youth. And uh, that will be July 16th to 21st, so be sure to sign up for all of that. Okay. Uh, let's take a moment and uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we just thank you and praise you for all your blessings. We thank you for the rain, and we thank you for the sunshine. And we just pray that you will be with our youth as they're traveling, keep them safe, and help them spread your word. Help them to grow as Christians and in fellowship with each other. Forgive us, Lord, when we have failed you. Be with us as we... Uh, Listen to your word being preached today. Be with Pastor Dan and help him with his voice. And uh, just pray for all of those who are going through health situations. You know their needs. And um, we thank you that you are there to see us through the difficult times. We just uh, trust you and pray for all of those that are going through the chemo and other treatments. Just be with us now as we turn to you and worship, and uh, we pray it will be pleasing to you. And these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh -oh. <laughs> Try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Much better. You'll stand with us. I know what I heard. I was talking to... Um, Somebody that went to the summer camp, and Dan spoke like twice at the campfire, and at the other ones, your voice is all worn out. That's probably what it is from camp. Plus, you're yelling at your kids. All, I mean, like, you don't yell at your kids. <laughs> I'm like, man, that's two more camps than I want to go to. Summit and then the family camp. So the family camp was this week, so some people probably went to that. That were with Steve Madison, that was who was telling me. I, I, I can't, I always mess up Steve and Ben because you know, Betsy has so many siblings. I mean, eight, eight did she have or something? Ten total? Yeah, so it's hard for me to keep track of, of all of them, but I know Rebecca pretty much. You'll stay with me. We're going to start off by singing Build Your Kingdom Here. Too quiet.
build in, and they have birthday parties for kids, foster kids especially, uh, kids in need. And this family, they gave their money to We Love Birthdays, and they got birthday supplies uh, for this family, and they dropped off some birthday stuff for this family, who maybe otherwise would not have had a birthday. Growing up, kids, anybody like birthdays? Birthday parties? Woo! Adults? Anybody? Love birthday parties? As you get 40 and 50 and 60. Okay, not as much, but kids love them. And I've talked with people. I talked with this one guy a few years ago, 19 years old, and he said he had never had a birthday party for him in his entire life. His parents didn't have the means, didn't have the wherewithal to throw him a birthday party. Not even a cake. 19 years, we were dropping off food for him and his mom. And they said, 19 years, never had a cake for his birthday. So, one thing that our reverse offering did uh, recently was to help families in need have uh, a birthday for their kids. So, awesome. Keep up the good work. Are we glad you? Yeah. And if you want more information, just Google. Uh, what is it? We love birthdays. We love I love birthdays. birthdays. We love birthdays. I think. Birthday what's that? I think it's we love birthday parties. We love birthday parties in Troy, and you can go and help them out, and go check out their location and donate items, uh, and continue to help kids and families in need. So, thank you all for your donations, as always, and for following God. He's most generous to us, and we want to be generous like Him. His voice sounds fine to me. I think you just said that just so we could get Elaine to do the announcement. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, as far as to, uh, since to keep, continue on to the theme of Dan just said, like, I didn't even know we got money. Like, because I was up here when you handed all the money out, and Nikki said we got $20 or whatever. And I was like at Kroger and I was walking out of Kroger, and there was this young girl, and I don't even know if it was the daughter or, or mother, but and a young boy, and like he's running around, and she had this sign basically saying they're stranded. And she didn't look like somebody that was like trying to scam me or something like that. So, but I just like, I, I don't never have cash, but I've been looking in my little cubby hole thing, and, and, and I saw a $20 bill in there, and I'm like, ah, I'll just give her that. So then I grabbed that and gave, gave her this $20 bill. I can't even. I didn't, couldn't even read the sign. The sign was this big, long thing. But I don't like for somebody to just stand outside of Kroger and have a sign. You know, I figured, you know, this person needed it. So that's where our twenty dollars went. Because Nikki was like, and it was not even the twenty dollars that I knew was given for that purpose. But it was like, but I'm like, hey, I got twenty dollars. So I just gave her what I had. So, so that's where ours went. So hopefully, she's not stranded anymore with her little brother or little son. I don't know. So, but if you'll stay, I'm just going to start off up here as a liar. And then we do Waymaker, and then we'll be dismissing kids to your church. When he told you you're not good, when he told you you're not right, when he told you you're not strong, to put up a good fight, when he told you you're not right,
sugar and lard. This oh, is just huge. Oh, yeah. 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 Wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. Small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Mary. I promised Tabitha I wouldn't let her die. I thought my faith would be enough. She was so sweet. And so happy to have found Jesus. I'm responsible for her death. You are not responsible. It is God's will. Will you come and see her? Don't be afraid. This is Peter, the man I told you about. What did you tell them about me, Mary? I told them the truth. And why have you brought me here? Because I believe you can help her. Power of God. It's so amazing, isn't it? And it changes us. It transforms our lives. Today and forever. I want you to open with me to Acts chapter 9. <clears throat> we're back in Acts today. And um, we're going to be continuing to see how this gospel, this good news of Jesus was going out. You know, from Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. This is about 25 miles northwest of Jerusalem that Peter is now spreading the good news of Jesus in. 
And we're going to see God do a few miracles through Peter to not just so people don't just hear about the name of Jesus. So he's not just telling them about Jesus, but he's showing them. He's showing them the power of Jesus in their lives. Let's take a look. Acts chapter 9. Picking up where we left off last time. Verse 32. Now as Peter went here and there among them all, he came down also to the saints who lived at Lydia. Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas, bedridden, for eight years, who was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. <laughs> and immediately <clears throat> he rose. And all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him. And what they do? What was their reaction? They turned to the Lord. They turned to the Lord. They saw the power of the risen Christ. We're going to pause there. Uh, if you take a note in your bulletin, write this first thought down, please. We can still have hope. We can still have hope even in the midst of tragedy in our lives. How many of you know somebody who's bedridden or somebody who can hardly walk? That was a case for Aeneas. But that's, this is several thousand years ago. <laughs> they didn't have the medical advancements that we have today. They didn't have the accessibility that we have today. They didn't have the handicapped parking and the, the ramps and the wheelchairs that we have today. And so this guy, he could barely do much of anything. His quality of life had to be pretty low. Just laying in bed all day. But God... But God chose to work in his life. God's miraculous power through Peter to give the people there, not just tell them about Jesus. That's good, we need to tell people. But he also showed them the power of Jesus. Gave them a glimpse of what the kingdom of God will be like. And so Aeneas, he's so excited. He gets out of bed and the first thing he does is what? What's he do? He makes his bed! Anybody love making their bed in the morning? Anybody not made your bed in decades since your mommy made it for you? This guy right here. <laughs> you can, uh, I don't know, just take a little side lesson from Aeneas. And when you get out of bed in the morning, just be grateful. Say a prayer as you're making your bed. Lord God, thank you that I am able physically able to get out of bed this morning because not everybody is. And you can tell your kids that or your grandkids that. Be grateful for making your bed in the morning because not everybody's able to get out of bed. They may or may not take you up on that. but This is what God does. Because of Jesus' work on the cross, we still have hope. This is, this is what it all comes down to. We still have hope even in the midst of tragedy in our lives. Uh, as you know, last week was Father's Day, and I love being a daddy, but this is the sixth year for me um, without a dad. Many of you, you've lost your parents, you miss your parents, uh, like I do as well. And for Rachel, this was her first Father's Day without her dad. And his birthday was on Father's Day this year, just like Sam's. And so that was sort of a double whammy for Rachel. First Father's Day without her dad. Um, That's why I wanted to go to coffee with her. Yeah. Yeah. We all need encouragement. Everybody misses somebody. Raise your hand if you've ever uh, lost somebody that you love. <laughs> Raise your hand if you know somebody who's lost somebody that they love. <laughs> this is everybody. The sin curse affects Everybody and everything. And I miss my dad with all my heart every single day. And I know a lot of you do too for your parents and your loved ones. But even when we feel the effects of sin curse in our body, even when we have, uh, you know, feel the, the sin and the, the sickness and the disease and the destruction and the death all around us, even when we lose the people that we love most, we can still have hope. 
And that makes all the difference in the world. In 11 and a half years at Troy View Church, I have officiated almost 50, not 15, 50 funerals. Not everybody was a member of Troy View Church, but a lot of them were. A lot of them were. And you know, we're missing a lot of people that we love dearly. Like some of you, I've been to the hospitals and the nursing homes, visiting the sick and the injured and the dying, more than I can count, more than you can count. I stood next to families even just last month. As their loved one is laying there and breathes their last breath on this earth. And the, the pain and the, the tears and the emotional weight and of that tragedy is devastating. I don't know what people do who don't have Jesus. I just don't. Who don't have that hope in their life. Because for the follower of Jesus, that last breath is not the end of their story. And it's not the end of our story either. We can still have hope for the cure. There is a sin sickness, and we do have a cure, and his name is what? Jesus. Jesus. This is not a fairy tale. This is not just a good moral story of be nice to other people, be kind, love your enemies. This is like real. He really lived. Jesus really died. He really rose. And he's really still alive. That's the truth that we cling on to. So when dark times come, we have that hope. I want to share with you... uh, What the great Apostle Paul, who we've been talking about as we're going through Acts, we're going to continue talking about, what did he do? Oh, he had a perfect life, right? After he came to Jesus, just everything was great, not a problem in the world, not a care. No, no, no. This is what he was dealing with, some difficulty. Uh, This is in your notes. I want to read it from 2 Corinthians 12, but in the message version. This is how he dealt with his pain that he had. His thorn in the flesh, he called it. Because of the extravagance of those revelations, Paul writes, and so I wouldn't get a big head. I was given the gift of a handicap. Okay, The gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Satan's angel did his best to get me down. What he did, in fact, was push me to my knees. No danger, then, of walking around high and mighty. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift. And I begged God, to remove it. Three times I did that. And then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. Paul says, once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap and began to appreciate the gift. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in my weakness. Now I take limitations in stride. And with good cheer, these limitations that cut me down to size, abuse, accidents, opposition, bad breaks, I just let Christ take over. And so, the weaker I get, the stronger I become. (laughs) Wow! That is some kind of attitude for his difficulties in dark times. When we have hard times, It's so easy to just complain, grumble, just tell other people how bad we're having it, throw ourselves the biggest pity party. And Paul says, in my weakness, I'm made strong. This attitude is incredible. The weaker I get physically, the stronger I become spiritually, Paul says. So maybe you can just think about rhetorical question. Where do you need healing in your life? Where do you want to seek Jesus and God for their healing power physically? Maybe for a loved one? Maybe spiritually? Maybe emotionally? Maybe mentally? Maybe financially? Maybe in your marriage? Maybe in your job? Maybe with your kids? Where do you need healing in your life? Think about that. Let's seek God for healing. But still still trust in Him. 
still believe in Him, still follow Him, even when the healing in our life doesn't come right away or doesn't come ever in this lifetime. He is still God and He is still good. And the difficulties in our life, Paul's like, we can view this as an opportunity (laughs) to grow and learn and become more like Jesus, uh, mature in the faith, as we lean more on God and trust in His promises in our life for our future. What's that song? I will praise you in the storm. Right? We can do that. A lot of people, they leave Jesus in the storm. They say, God and Jesus, how could you cause this pain in my life? How could you allow this suffering? How could you allow this evil to happen? If you're letting that evil happen, that must mean that you're either not God or you're evil. And so I'm out. And people ditch Christianity because they have a hard time reconciling that God is still good even though right now we live in a fallen world. But that will not always be the case. And that's why we have this hope that we need to cling to no matter what. I was at family camp last week, as Greg said, losing my voice, speaking several times and sharing about change and transformation and Saul to Paul with them Sunday night and Thursday night, maybe That's why I'm like this, but there's this guy named Johnny there at family camp. Does anybody know uh, Billy and Diana Gallagher's uh, grandson named Johnny? Anybody know Johnny? He's been here before. He's worshipped with us. Cool guy. He listens to our podcast every single week. He's one of our two followers besides me. And uh, Johnny, shout out to Johnny. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you last week. But Johnny was sharing with me that he was teaching a kids class. Uh, They're at family camp all week long, and they were studying the three men in the fiery furnace. Hebrew names are Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. And uh, he made sure to emphasize that point with our son, Azariah. He didn't like their Babylonian names because he wanted to stick with their Hebrew names. Maybe you know them by their VeggieTales names, Rakshak and Benny. Okay? So these three guys are in the fiery furnace, and he's teaching all week on this. But he said he was focusing uh, with the kids on this one specific part. Now, this isn't in your notes, but it's, uh, I thought of this this morning to share with you. Daniel chapter 3, 16 to 18. Daniel 3. Johnny loved this section, and he, he told the kids, you, this is just so powerful. O Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel writes uh, in this book, Old Testament, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, for not bound down, right, to the God, to the statue. The God whom we serve is able to save us. He is. And they said, He will rescue us from your power, O your majesty. But even if He doesn't, even if He doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never, ever Serve your gods or worship the gold statue you've set up. Powerful. Powerful words from Rakshak and Benny. God can save us. He does have the power to heal in our lives. He does have the power to work in us. In that way. Talking about sickness and death. But even If he doesn't, even if he doesn't heal your sickness, even if he doesn't heal your loved one, and they fall asleep in Christ, God forbid, even if tragedy strikes, even if you're dealing with darkness and despair and difficulty and depression and anxiety and fear and terrible things, abuse and neglect, and loneliness and addiction, even if you have these things in your life, will you still, like Hananiah, Azariah, Mishael, still follow God no matter what, even if in this lifetime it's not solved to your standards? Will you still cling to the hope of Jesus? And the resurrection power that he has in the age to come. Will you? Will you? Will you and I still worship 
even if you have infertility, even if you lose a child, even if you have a physical ailment, even if you're in a car accident, even if you ain't got no money, honey, even if your spouse leaves you or does terrible things, even if your boss is this kind of whatever, <laughs> even if, even if, even if, God is still God. Will you still trust that? Will you still believe that God is still good and He's still making a way for you to be saved even if you're not healed right away? Even if you miss your loved one with all your heart and soul? And will you cling tightly to that hope of Jesus even if, even if, even if? I want to finish this chapter and see this powerful thing from Tabitha and Peter that we just witnessed in the video. So that was the healing for Aeneas. Look at verse 36. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Now there was in Joppa, which is where Jonah was as well. I'll give you a little bonus on the church email about that this week. There was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity, servant of the Lord. Verse 37. In those days she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, please come with us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the windows excuse me, widows stood beside him weeping and showing tunics, Greek, a long garment worn under the cloak next to the skin, uh, and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. She had the gift of sewing. And all these people were wearing clothes she had made. So she had this great gift. We're all given gifts. She was serving in that way, verse 40. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said these two words, Tabitha, arise. That's what Jesus will say to us one day. Rise, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up, probably a little surprised. <laughs> Verse 41, and he gave her his hand. It's beautiful. And raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa. And not just her, but many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tanner. So there's miracles happening here. Not just that somebody was healed. Not just that somebody was raised to life. But that many people in this area saw the works of God. And their eternities, their lives and their eternities were changed. And that's a powerful miracle happening too. Last thought, you can write this down. We have a hope that isn't extinguished when life ends. It's not gone. It's not out. It's not over. <laughs> not the fat lady singing. But when Jesus comes back, it's not over. It's not over. Tabitha, she had this reputation in our community. Uh, she's a great servant. She was a great helper. Making his clothes in her sewing ministry. Uh, and yet, even with a servant heart, even being very generous, a loving, devoted Christian, she still got sick. She still died. How could God allow this? Because we live in a sin sick world. And these things happen. But there's a brighter day coming. There's a better day coming. And, and through Peter, God wanted to show uh, everyone a sneak preview. If you like those teaser trailers for the new movie coming up and the preview and you got to see that, God's like, I'm going to give y'all in the city a sneak preview, a teaser trailer, a glimpse of the kingdom to come. This is just a little glimmer of what it will be like. Now, Tabitha, she wasn't uh, like Princess Bride. She wasn't mostly dead. She was all dead. And this was a miracle. Now, she was not resurrected to immortal life, eternal life, like Jesus was on the third day. She was resuscitated, resurrected to 
live however much longer, kind of like Lazarus uh, and others throughout the scriptures, but she died again someday. And she is right now waiting for the hope of Jesus' return. I would have liked to see the look on the funeral director's face. <laughs> and everybody in the room, this is just blowing them away. So here. <laughs> well, she wouldn't have feared death after that. She wouldn't have feared death. I don't think she would fear Maybe if she died again. Get Peter back here, guys. Just keep doing it over and over and over again. But as Christians, as followers of Jesus, I know death is scary. I don't want to die either. But the truth is one out of one people do die unless Jesus returns. And we don't have to fear death because we have hope. Tabitha had hope and they're showing hope to everybody around them. The hope of the kingdom to come. What the future holds for Christians. Now a lot of people who are not Christians, I think they kind of view life sort of like a candle, right? And when you're, when you're born, you get this light, you get this flame of life. You're alive. So the, the breath of life has gone into you and you live your life and you do your things. And as you get older, you know, the wick burns down and our life is coming to an end. Hopefully we lived a good and faithful life as servants of Jesus and loving and serving other people, but we all only have so much candle. And then we get down to the end. And what happens at the end of our life is our flame is, our life flame is extinguished Snuffed out. Right? And a lot of people, too many people, think that that's it. That that's all she wrote. That that's all there is. There was just this interview with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? A few weeks ago. And he said, this life is all there is. There's nothing after death. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> He said, it's just a lie. It's just a fairy tale. You can look up the interview. I don't remember the exact words. I'm paraphrasing. But he said, there's nothing. And people are just lying to you. When your life is snuffed out, that's the end of the story. A lot of people think when your life flame is gone, is extinguished, when you breathe your last, that's it. And there is nothing else. How dark and depressing is that? <laughs> My goodness. We don't have to live in that darkness though. We have a hope that even though we do live our life and live our days and one day we will breathe our last that Jesus ha 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 our Savior, our Messiah, He gets His eternal flame out and He lights our life back up again. This is called resurrection life. This is eternal hope and God's kingdom on the earth, the Messiah, Jesus, because of His forgiveness and His death on the cross in place for our sins. We are able to have not just 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years if you're lucky, not just that many years, but a flame that never dies. A candle that will never be extinguished. A life, eternal life, that will never, ever, ever go out. Maybe I'll, I'll do that. I'll use this prop. Never go out. Because we have Jesus. Huh. Anybody love that hope? Anybody long for the resurrection and Jesus' return? The children's uh, Jesus Storybook Bible says when all the sad things come untrue. That's it, man. This is our hope. This is everything for us. Jesus, he conquered Satan, sin, and death. Conquered death. Victorious over the grave. And his resurrection to eternal life, not like Tabitha, because she did die later, but that's a glimpse of it. 
But he rose to live forever. They call it the first fruits. They say, this is what it's going to be like for you. For those who trust and also believe in him, who also follow him, that this life, when it ends, that's not the end. When it's over, it's just the next stage. Uh, the Bible talks about the Christian's hope, uh, falling asleep, waiting in the grave for the resurrection to come when Jesus returns. And I know, we all know, don't we? The sting of death, it hurts. It is the most, I think, the worst pain that we experience this life. And this life is a loss of a loved one. But we have a glorious hope which cannot be taken away by anything or anyone. Like those three in the book of Daniel, you can do whatever you want to us. Because we have God. We have Yahweh. And He has resurrection power. So do your worst. Because you ain't got nothing on Him. He's got more power than you'll ever know. And we can have victory. And we can enjoy, uh, I want to share with you this one Greek, two Greek words. Zoe Aeonios. Anybody ever heard the name Zoe? You know, people named Zoe. That means life. Aeonios is Greek. It means, uh, sort of, it's been translated as eternal life. But really, if you get down to it, it's like life in the age to come. So repeat after me. Zoe Aeonios. Zoe Aeonios. That's to wake you up. Uh, Greek phrase in the original New Testament. Perfect, everlasting, life, abundant, and the messianic age to come, the kingdom of God on earth, Zoe Aeonios. And this is the biblical hope that we trust in, that we long for. We know there's something better. There's got to be something more than all the hurt and pain and sickness and death of this life. Don't you feel that? There is. I have good news. There is. We have a hope. And his name is? Jesus. Jesus. Nancy. Yeah. A sticker that says, when it's over, it ain't over. And there you go. <laughs> when it's over, it ain't over. Zoe Aeonios. Life in the age to come. Resurrection hope. And power in that. And um, getting rid of the sin's curse. And... I want to share this with you. Um, for those who trust and believe in Jesus, I've read this before, but it bears repeating. Revelation 21, last verse, I'll, I'll close with this. John saw a vision of what's to come. Hope of the future. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Can you... Picture this day. Can you imagine this day? Do you hope for this day? <clears throat> Neither shall there be mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things, the sin-sick, fallen world things, have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage. And I will be his God. And he will be my son. Or she will be my daughter. They will be my child. That will be the best day. Like if you've had some good days in your life, 
Maybe your wedding. Maybe an amusement park. Maybe Disney World. No, those aren't very great. We won't get into that again. But <laughs> You've had some good days. Just a little sliver of what this day will be like. Pales in comparison. Perfect peace. Perfect love. Perfect joy. Perfect hope. Forever. Forever. With our God Yahweh, His Son, the Savior, our Messiah, Jesus, it, there is nothing greater. There's nothing better. You know, humans, we kind of want something better. We want something shinier, newer, faster, nicer. But this is the hope, the hope of the world. And his name is Jesus. So we're going to sing our last song. And uh, I hope you've trusted in him. I hope you surrendered your life to him. If not, make today the day of your salvation. I hope you trust in his coming kingdom. Zoe Aeonios, life in the age to come. And that you've given your life to the one who conquered Satan, sin, and death. Because there is something worse than dying. That's dying without Jesus. Just the truth. Or you have to pay the penalty for your own sin in the lake of fire after the great white throne judgment. You do not want to pay the penalty for your own sin. Jesus says, I take it freely, openly for anyone. Forgiveness of sin, grace, free grace. Who wants it? And so yet some people still go, no, nah, not me. I don't want your grace. I don't want your zoe eonios. I don't want your abundant life and life forever in the age to come. And that's their choice. But somebody's got to pay for sin. Either Jesus on the cross or us. I hope for you it's Jesus and the forgiveness that he has. And uh, if you would like to come forward during the last song or to stay after, we'll have the elders up here uh, open for prayer. If you'd like to pray for some healing, some hope, and your life, something you're dealing with, you are always invited to come forward. So let's stand and sing praises to our God who heals.
Father, we give you thanks and praise. We're so grateful for everything you've given to us. The flame of life and the flame of eternal life through your Son, Jesus, which will never be extinguished. Thank you for that hope. Thank you for that the power. Your resurrection power for the day when your son Jesus comes back and tells all of us and all our loved ones who also follow Jesus, arise. Arise to be with you forever in your kingdom. Now, until, the, until then, God, you know that we struggle. You know this world is dark and a difficult place. And you know what we're dealing with. Our hurts, our pains, our aches, our sorrows, our frustrations, our difficulties, our trials, our suffering. You know it all. And you are the healer. Maybe not in this lifetime, but help us to have hope in the age to come. And to cling on to that hope with everything that we have, every bit of strength. Until your son Jesus returns, we give you all the praise and all the glory, and all the honor, because you are the God of the universe, and you are the God of eternity. Thank you for inviting us, uh, us into that with your Son, Jesus, who gives us life, abundant life, and life forever, in the age to come. In his name, everybody said, Amen.